This is part one of a two-part series where we will model, texture, and light this cologne bottle. Whether you are a beginner or advanced, at the end of this tutorial, you would have acquired techniques that you can implement in your own projects right away. And instead of continually pausing the video, I recommend you watch this video in its entirety and then try to recreate it on your own afterwards. All right, so let's get started. All right, so before we start modeling anything, there are some helpful add-ons that we will want to enable. So click on Edit, uh, Preferences, and when you click on Add-ons in the search bar, we type in Loop Tools. So Loop, so make sure you have this one enabled. Also another add-on called Edge Flow, although I'm not sure we're using it in this tutorial, but it's a very helpful add-on to have nonetheless. All of these add-ons that I'm suggesting here are free. There's another one called Select Similar. Select Sim, similar is what it means. And it's by this guy called Kushiro. He makes some very helpful modeling add-ons, most of them free. All right, I'll put a link to this one in the description. All right, so with those enabled, let's begin. So press one for orthographic view. And we wanna add our reference image to start with. So click on scene collection and press the letter C to create another collection. Double click it and call it refs. We could probably give it a color. You can rename the other one bottle because that's what we'll be using to put the bottle in this collection and give this a nice color. All right, so with refs selected, press shift A and add an image, reference image. So navigate to where you have your reference, click on it and load reference image. This, this looks a bit off. If we look at where the 3D cursor is, it's slightly shifted to the right. So let's fix that. So press G, X, and just tap the keyboard left mouse arrow until we, we just eyeball it somewhere there. Click enter. All right, now we don't want to be selecting this by accident and moving it about. So let's disable the selectability of this. So to do that, click on this filter icon, uh, check this selectable icon and turn it off. So now we can accidentally select the image. All right, let's turn down the opacity of this just a bit. So click on object data properties and check opacity. Change it to something like 0.4 enter that's more like it and check this only axis align button what it will do when we move we wouldn't see it so it wouldn't distract us all right so just press one to go back into orthographic view all right so we tool this up click on bottle and now we're going to start modeling our bottle so let's add an, a cylinder to start with let's press shift a and add a mesh cylinder and let's click on this tab and change this to 24 i'll explain why in a sec and change the cap fill type from end gun to nothing. So that there will be no, no caps to the top and bottom. And let's now scale this to fit the side. We've, you know, before we do that, I forgot to mention, because it's a, a perfume bottle, let me turn the visibility of this off. Because it's a perfume bottle or cologne bottle, sorry. <laughs> Click on scene properties and let's change the unit scale from meters to centimeters. In that way, we will be modeling according to scale. All right. So let's re-enable the, the, the matter of fact, let's, let's, let's rename it bottle and let's scale this now to, to fit the size of this bottle. So tap into edit mode and just press S to scale and scale it about there. All right. So press Alt Z for X-ray view. All right. Let's box select the bottom. Press G, Z, move it up about here. Let's box select this top part and press GZ and move it to about here. What we're doing here, we're focusing on this part of the bottle first. It's a good habit to do that. You observe your model, see which parts is a, a little more difficult and attack those parts first. It will usually augur well uh, when modeling the rest of the bottle. So what we're gonna do in this instance, you see this indent here? There are six of them on the bottle. So there are three to the front and three to the back. We're going to model just one, then duplicate it and create a circular array around, and which is why I created it with 24 edges so that it will be divisible by 360. All right, you see how it works very soon. What I actually want though, I want just these four, one, two, three, four, these four faces. So let me select face select, or you can just press three. Let me disable X review by pressing Alt Z. And now will be a good time to turn on my screencast key so you see what's happening. All right, so you should see in the bottom left corner the screencast keys. I just want these four faces here. 
So let's get rid of the rest by pressing Ctrl I and press X and delete those faces. We want to concentrate on this, this one because as mentioned, let me press Alt Z for X review. We just want to concentrate on see about this, this indent. So how are we going to do that with edge, edge mode selected? Press Ctrl R and create an edge and drop it about here. Press Ctrl R and create another one and drop that about here. And then one last one in the middle. Alt Z to come out of X review. Press 3 for face select and select these four faces here. And we're going to inset it. Now, when we inset, all these sides will inset, but we don't want that this top part to be inset. So when we press I, we can press B to turn off uh, boundary select. So let's press 1 so that we'll see what's, what's happening. So when I press I to inset, press B and turn off boundary and drop it about there. Let me turn on X-ray again to see what I'm doing. All right, so drop it about there. All right, so we're going to push this back now on the Y. So press G, Y, and just push it back slightly. And now press 2 and click on these edges and press G, Y once again. Press 1 for front view again and press vertex, enter vertex select now. And we're going to select uh, this one hold shift and select this one press g z just to move it up just a bit we want this sort of curvature and uh, box select these middle vertices and press g z and just bring it down just a tad all right so we're supposed to have something like that all right so what we want to do now is to duplicate this plane and spin it around so we're going to use the help of some modifiers. So let's tap out of edit mode. Now would be a good time to save. Let's press Ctrl S to save. So let me click on the plus icon to create another one and save this Blender file. Let's add an empty so that we could spin the duplicates around the empty. Click on Shift A and add an empty plane axis. So we could change this from 100 to something like probably, probably 20. So we can see what's happening. All right. Did I change the unit scale? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So with the empty, we have to make sure that the plane's origin is at the same point as the empty. So with the plane selected, let's add an array modifier. So click on the modifiers and add an array. But we're going to use the object array. So turn off relative offset and enable object offset. All right. Tool down this and select the, the empty, empty 01. Why do I have empty? Oh, it's because the refs is named empty also. Let me let me double click that. I'll rename it image or something like that. All right. So click on the plane and object offset is empty. All right. Make sure I have merge enabled. And we want six counts. So we could hold control and scroll the wheel until we reach six. Let's go back to front view to see what's happening. Remember I said there are six of these, three on the front and three on the back. So now that we have set this up, we have already created six of them. If I press R, you see it's there. <laughs> so press seven for top view and you'll see this in action. So let's press R and type six zero, enter. All right, what happened there? Remember, it's six of them and they're going around in a circle 360 degrees. So if you move the plane 60 degrees six times, you will end up with 360 degrees, a complete circle. And that's how you model this top part. Now don't forget to merge the first and the last plane. And also this merge distance, let's change this to like 0.3, all right? Control S. I have a habit of just pressing Control S ever, ever so often to save. It's good to do that. So now if I tab into edit mode and select A, you will see that it's just this plane and using these array modifiers. Now let's apply this modifier. All right. Tab, press A to select all. And just to make sure that all the, all the vertices are merged, press M and we merge by distance. All right. So we see zero vertices. So that means all were connected. Now let me show you what happened just now. When I press M, you notice these underscores. Well, those are the shortcuts letters that we can use. So if I press, for example, M, I notice this underscore is under the B. So I press M, B, it'll merge by distance. If I press M and I press A, it will merge at center. We don't want that, right? So press Ctrl Z. That's just a helpful tip I thought I'd let you know. 
All right, so now we have that first part. So what are we going to focus on next? You'll notice there are these sort of buttons to the top here. So let's see if we could model that. Let me turn off this bottle so you see what's happening. You'll notice that there's the indents and then the buttons, the indents and the buttons. So really, uh, the buttons are next to the indents. So let me show you what I mean. The buttons are supposed to be somewhere here. So let's click on this, uh, tab into edit mode, hold alt and left click to the, on the top. And just press F. All right, so the buttons will be somewhere here in the middle here. Now we're going to create these holes for them. I press 7 for top view. And let's just connect these. Press J to connect these main vertices. Press J. Just follow what I'm doing here. Let's connect these. J. Connect these. J. And let's get rid of this for now. Let's turn off the ref. Because it's, it's in the way. All right. Click on this one. Shift click on that one. Press G. And shift click. Click on this. Shift click on that. Press G. What I really want is this sort of pizza slice here. Let me press Alt Z for extra view. Just this pizza slice that we want. Where it's half of the indent on either side. And then we're going to rotate it all the way around. It seems like we are going backwards, like we're undoing what we did. But it's for a worthy cause because we want to add the circles in the middle. So let me show you. With X-ray mode enabled, press C for circle select. And just highlight these vertices here. Here. And don't forget the middle one as well. We just want this pizza slice, I call it. So press Control i like we did before to invert the selection. Press X and delete vertices. So now we're left with this pizza slice. <laughs> so now in with edge select, click on 2. Press 2 or click on this button. Click on this one. Left click and hold shift and click on the other one. Right click, subdivide. What that did there was create two vertices here. So let's connect them. Click on this one. Shift click and press G. Uh, click on the middle one. Double tap G and just slide it down a bit. Let's do the same for this one, these two here. Click here, shift, click here, press G. Click on that vertex, double tap G and just slide it up just a bit. Lastly, click this one here, shift, click this one, G. Click on the middle one and double tap G and move it down just about the middle. All right, so now we're going to press Control Shift B and scroll the mouse wheel once and Drop it about there. And now let's connect these vertices to each other. So click on this one, shift click this G. This one, this one, G. This one, this one, G. This one, this one, G. Click on the one in the middle. X, delete that vertice. Press 2 for edge, edge mode. Hold Alt and left click. Right click and now with loop tools enabled. Click on circle. All right. So that is our hole. Now let's just rotate this a bit just to line it up. So let's press R. And let's line it up about somewhere, somewhere there. All right. Probably we could, we could scale it a bit uh, around there. Let's press 1 for front view and let's re-enable the ref. So we're going to just create this sort of uh, button to the top there. I've, I've ha I had the bottle in my hand. I gave it back to the client already, but I could tell you what it looks like. Let me show you. <laughs> so press E and S, just left click, and press E, Z, and just push that down a bit. And press E, S once again, left click, and E, Z. And how do we know how far to move it up? Well, we can just average or we could use this snapping so we could snap to vertex. So what we could do with that, with that selected, if we want to have it be the same height as this, these vertices here, after pressing G and Z, we could hold control and gesture your mouse to any one of any vertex that you want it to be the same height as. All right. So in this case, we click on this one. All right. And now let's fill this by pressing ES and ES one more time, and then press Control F and enable grid fill. We want to keep it all quads for subdivision surface modeling. 
since I mentioned that, let's tighten these edges a bit, bevel these edges so that when we subdivide it, let me show you what will happen. If I just press Control 2 for subdivision modifier, that's the shortcut. You see what is happening here. These edges are being smoothed out and it's not as tight. Whereas if I turn it off and I press 2 for edge mode and Alt left click and I press Control B and give it a little bevel, watch what happens now when I re-enable the subdivision modifier. So now these edges are a little tighter. All right, so let's undo that. So we're going to do it in order. All right, so let me tab into edit mode. Alt, left click on that edge. Alt, shift, left click on this edge. All right, so let's press Control B. And drop that about here. We could open the operator panel. Uh, we could change it to like 0 0.2, 0 0.2. All right, and let's... Let's actually move this edge a little closer here. So hold Alt, left click, and we could just scale, scale it down a little closer. All right. Now remember, we press one for orthographic view and re-enable the reference image. Remember, these have a little height on them. So let's raise it up just a bit. All right. Press one for vertex select. Uh, click on this, on this vertex, and let's increase the selection by pressing control plus and we want to raise keep con keep pressing control plus until we reach this this edge here if you press alt z for x-ray we we'll actually see what's happening is if we press control plus one more time we will get all of this down here so that when we move we don't want all of this moving we just want this top part so let's press control minus to undo that and so when we press G Z, only that top part moves. And let me press one for front orthographic, re-enable the reference image. And just press Z, G, Z, and move it up just about there. And there's a, a little curve to the top. It's not totally flat. So let me show you how we address that. So click on, let me turn off X-ray, Alt Z. Click on that vertex and enable proportional editing. And instead of smooth, change it to sphere fall off type. So when we press GZ, now the, the whole thing moves. That is because, let me scroll out so you'll see what is happening. When you press GZ, you notice that that gray circle is sort of faded. That's the circle of influence. If I scroll on my middle mouse wheel, I reduce or extend the circle of inf influence. So let me right click to cancel that. So let me go in a little further, GZ and scroll on the mouse wheel to see how much we want it to influence and i i reckon just about just about there yeah just about there all right drop that there let's turn off all right so this is what we have for now now let's press seven for top view and we're going to again rotate it uh, 360 degrees after duplicating but we're going to do it a little differently this time we're going to shift d to duplicate it and spin it around the 3d cursor so we select the transform pigeon pivot point and change it to 3d cursor so tab into edit mode press a to select all and we press shift d it duplicates it if we press r six zero enter it rotates at 60 degrees. Let's do that again. Shift D, right click, R, 60 degrees, enter. And now what we could do is press A to select all. We could press Shift D and we could rotate it 180 degrees this time. 180, enter. Now these edges are not merged together. So press A, remember the shortcut, M, B, 47 vertices removed so now that we have that we want now let's go back to our reference to see what we want to do next let's press alt z for x-ray and so if you note let me turn it off though you will notice that these edges here have a pretty thick bevel on it so that's what we're going to do we're going to bevel this these edges but we're going to do it a little differently let me show you press alt c to turn off x-ray click on it tab into edit mode and press 2 for edge select so we want to select these edges here, but we don't want to go around select everything like that. So let me show you how we could shortcut that. Click on this edge, shift click this, 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 and this one. And remember that add-on I told you about? If we right click, it's, it's in the context menu here. 
select sim it will select all the similar edges going all around press alt z so we can make sure that we select the correct ones all right so all the edges they are selected let me press alt z to turn off that again and we still want these edges here click shift left click this 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 one and this one and then right click select sim you see that it selects the edges that we want alt z just make sure we have all that all the edges that we want selected all right all right so we're not going to just press ctrl b and bevel it no we want more control over that press n in the item tab we're going to add a bevel weight to it so under edges data turn this all the way to one nothing happens besides it turning blue but when we add a bevel modifier add modifier bevel change the limit method to weight and change the segments to two and turn this down to something like three three is good for now all right so three centimeters all right I, something is wrong i think i didn't apply no i did apply the scale but i think i entered the ah uh, that's what happened nevertheless we'll scale it down afterwards all right so i changed the unit scale but i forgot to actually uh, change the size of, of the mesh to match that nevertheless let's continue and i'll show you probably afterwards how we could how we could fix that it, is, it just means that we we'll have to tab select all and scale it down to size all right we could do that afterwards all right so see that we have these edges and the bevel modifier attached it by holding shift we could we could adjust this uh, non-destructively all right but that is good for now and so let's test it all by adding a subsurf modifier let's add modifier subsurf and increase the viewport levels to something like two or maybe three and right click shade auto smooth let's go into front view and see all right let's press alt z so far so good all right we could adjust this a bit alt a to deselect everything and let's press one for with that select and we could select these and we could press g z to move it up just a bit alt z tab out we could adjust it now i just adjusted just one all right but again let me turn off subdivision if we want to select all of these same thing with that selected right click select similar and all the similar vertices will be selected you see how helpful that add-on is i use it all the time and so i could now press gz and move it up just a bit so just change the the look of it all right, so it looks really nice. Control S to save. All right, so that first part is done with. All right, this looks good as well too. This looks really nice. All right, so let's move on to the other part of the bottle now. So let's enable, press Alt A to deselect everything. We're in edit mode. Alt Z to enable X-ray. All right, box select these bottom vertices and press E to extrude it and press Z and move that down to about here all right and press EZ and move that all the way down to here so let's tab out and see how that looks so this is normal bottle but we're going to fix this all right so we want to separate this glass bottom part from the top so let's box select these vertices here and press V all right so that will split those edges but it's still part of uh, the same object so to separate it just press l with the mouse hovered over here press l sorry alt a to deselect press l to select that and press p separate by selection so we have two selections now two different separate objects that you see all right so we have we'll call this the top and this part the the glass so let's work on one at a time let's hide the top for now we could just press h to hide it all right or we could press the eye icon and let's work on this bottom piece so select it tap into edit mode alt z to x-ray let's add some loop cuts here to help us out so control r 
and add about three. Left click, right click. Let's add one more to the bottom here. Control R and box select this bottom vertices and just scale. Oh, right now it's scaling to the 3D cursor. Let's change the pivot point back to bounding box so that we just press S and it will scale just about there. All right. And Alt, left click and press Control B and just bevel it, bevel it once. So we'll have three segments and this bottom part, box select that and press E and S to scale. E and S to scale again. Control F, grid fill. All right. Press one. Press back one for front orthographic. And we may have to bevel. You know what? Press two for edge mode. Alt, left click, Control X and remove that edge. Alt and left click on this edge. And let's do the same thing like up there. Control B, bevel. All right, press one front view and let's tab out to see how it looks. Tab out and press Alt Z and looks, looks good. You'll notice that because we subdivided it, it shrinked the mesh a little bit. So what we're going to do, re-enable the top. We're going to expand it together. So hold shift and click on that. So the two will be selected. Tab into edit mode, select A to select everything. And we simply want to scale it in the X and Y without interfering the Z axis. So press S and then Shift Z and hold Shift for incremental scaling just about there. Tab out now, Alt A to deselect everything. And now we have our bottle uh, more lined up to our reference. So let's turn up the top once again. And so we have this bottom piece all modeled and we also have this top piece. All right. Let's add the cap now. So that will be easy. A nice way to do that is to tab into edit mode here. Press 1 for vertex. Click on that. And let's move the cursor to the top here. So that whenever we add an object, it will add to where the cursor is. So shift S and click on cursor to selected. Because we just selected that vertex. So now tab out of edit mode. And press 1 on the numpad. Press shift A. And mesh. We could add another cylinder. Now this time we could probably turn this down to something like 12. We don't need that many vertices. All right. Tab into edit mode. Press Alt Z to see what we're doing. And let's just scale that in to match the size. Somewhere about there. Uh, tab out and let's press G Z and let's move it up. Just about, it's about there. Tab into edit mode. Box select that. Press G Z. And let's move it up just about here. All right, and let's add a few loop cuts. Actually, before we do that, okay, good. There are no, I thought I enabled the faces, so that's good. So we don't need loop cuts at just as yet. So Alt Z to go back into X-ray, box select the top, and let's fill this like we filled it before. So let's press E, S, scale it about there, and then press Control F, grid fill. Alt Z to come out of X-ray, Press 2 for edge select, Alt and left click on this edge. Press Ctrl B to bevel. Just bevel the top just a bit. All right, let's see how that looks. We still have this sort of button to create here. That will be pretty easy. What we could do, let me show you. We could press Ctrl R, create an edge loop there, and move it about here. Now press Ctrl B. And make sure that you scroll the mouse twice. So you'll have this two edges in the middle. Left click to confirm. And let's go in a little closer. And so now with going to face, face select and alt and left click on this edge here. So it will select these, these faces here. And I'll press E, Z. Left click. Press E, Z one more time. And left click and hold it right there. Now press 2 for edge select and Alt, left click on that edge, Alt, left click on that edge and Control B, give it a small, small bevel, just about there. All right. And now let's do just what we did earlier. This time we select this face, 3, go for face select, click on that, enable proportional editing with sphere, fall off, press 1 for front view. G, Z, and just about, let's roll the mouse. Let's see, let's see. G, Z, 
Ce să băut? Ce să băut de ea? Ce să băut de ea? Alright. And let's do no proportional editing. Press 2 for edge select. And let's add an edge loop inside here. Control R. And add an edge loop inside here. Alright. So now, before we subdivide it, let's just put, add about a few more edge loops here. Supporting edge loops. About 3. Or oh, actually, let's undo that. What I like to do is click Control arrow and give it one edge loop. Left click, right click, and then press Control B. And let's make it about three edges and just scale until you reach somewhere like here. Those are enough supporting edge loops. So now when we press Control 2, you get a nice cap. And right click, shade auto smooth. All right, Control S to save. Now you could, of course, tweak it uh, to fit exactly how you would like it, and so on. All right. Let's now focus on the bottom part. So let's turn off this, rename this to cap. All right. Let's turn off that, and we could turn off the top as well. And let's focus on this bottom piece, the glass. Let's press Alt Z to see what's happening. What is happening here is that there is a sort of gap to the bottom. And there's liquid inside up to that point. Now we want to solidify this glass. So we want to create some thickness. And also keep in mind that we have to create thickness for the bottom part. Alright, so let's see how we're going to do that. Alt Z to come out of X-ray. So let's, this does not need a bevel. We added these bevels manually. And so this bevel is really only for the, the weights that we apply to the top. So we could remove this bevel modifier from there and we could turn off sub d for now all right let's give this some thickness so let's add a solidify modifier all right let's press one for front view and let's turn off the reference just for now i want you to see what is happening if you while in object mode if you press alt c you could actually see the thickness all right so let's increase this con let's click on even thickness and hold control and just scroll the middle middle wheel until you reach about about four centimeters there all right and remember we want to create a thickness to the bottom here so how are we going to do that well with this to the top uh, let's apply this modifier so press alt z to come out of x-ray tab into edit mode so now there's geometry there and let's select this middle this face press three for face select select this middle face and press control plus actually is what we're going to do this click on this face and press control shift and click on this face and select the whole face there now press control plus until you reach about here press x delete faces all right so what we have now if we come into front view and press Alt, tab out and press Alt Z, what we'll have here is basically this. Let me see what's, did we delete that? Let's press two for it's, and let's also, let's also delete, go into edge uh, vertex select and press X and delete that vertex as well. All right, so now we have up to here, if we could see well. Right, so Alt, left click this one, press Control plus, and press X and delete. Good. Now press Alt and left click on this edge here, and we're gonna fill this bottom part here. So press E, Z, Control F, grid fill. So if we if we press one for front view, tab out of edit mode, Alt Z, now we'll see what happens here. So we just created our thickness there for the bottom. Now let's see how thick we want it by re-enable the reference image. Alright, and I think that we we had it correct. Alright. Maybe I could pull this down just slightly. Actually, we may need to go up a bit because the thickness is, is pretty thick. So how do we do that? Tab into edit mode. And if we press with that selected, if we press G Z, it will move it. It will move that up. But we also need these vertices to move along with it. 
let me show you to see it more clearly turn off x-ray alt z control plus one more time so that now when we press gz the whole thing would move so let's press one for front view alt z to see what we're doing gz and move it to about to about here all right alt a to deselect everything alt z to come out of x-ray tab out of edit mode and let's press alt z to see what's happening so that's that is the thickness that we created to the bottom now we want to create the liquid now let me show you how to do that properly press alt z to come out of x-ray and we're going to actually use this geometry inside here to create the liquid now will be a good time to check to see if our normals are correct let me press viewport overlays and click on phase orientation and once it's all blue we're good all right so let me turn this back off i actually save it as a, a, a quick favorites so that i just need to press q and it's right there i could turn off that all right so let's create the liquid so tab into edit mode and we're going to do the same thing like jack before press three for face select click on this one Control alt click on this one to select all the faces there and now press Control plus all right all the way up until the top there press shift d p separate by selection tab out of edit, of edit mode and with that new selection double click it and name it liquid now what is happening here if we press one for front view alt z it's no different to the glass right now because it's right up against the glass. If I shift left click the glass, you will see what is happening there. It's it's right inside of me. In edit view, and I click on the liquid. It's right there. But we want it a little bit inside the thickness here. So to do that, we did select it. Let me show you what I just did in case you didn't didn't notice. Let me come out and do it again. So click on liquid and press Control. If we click shift it will select everything in between so click on liquid and hit control and click on glass and we have body glass and liquid selected mm -hmm. tab into edit mode press one for front view and if we press if i just click on liquid since we are already in edit mode in two of them if i press l it will select the liquid so here's what i want to do first of all i want to press alt z and let's press S for scale, but we don't want it scaling on the Z axis. So S and then Shift Z and hold Shift and just scale it until it reaches inside the glass. You can see, you can see it's going in inside the glass there. Very good. And the bottom part, press one for vertex select and select the bottom part. How do we do that? Let me show you. Alt Z. Let's turn off the glass for now so we could see what's happening. All right, so let's again select left click select the face control shift and then control plus we just want that bottom piece there and we want to we want to carry that down into the glass so press one and press gz and just push it down a little bit into the glass all right so if you click on the glass and control click on the liquid with all z you will see that the liquid which is the orange one highlighted here is in within the glass on the side and the bottom and that is what we want all right so to finish it off let's make sure and close off close off the liquid so it will be manifold alt z and let's press forward slash to enter into local view so that we're focusing only on the liquid tab into edit mode press one for vertex select hold alt and left click the top same thing again ES to scale, ES to scale and click, Control F, grid fill. We want to tighten up the edges because we're going to add a subdivision surface modifier. Hold Alt and left click this edge. And again, Control B, and just add a, a thin bevel like that, just like that. Let's change this bevel instead of being the shape being 0.5, let's turn this all the way to 1 so it will be a sharp, a hard bevel. Now tap out. And don't forget we are in local view so press forward slash to come out of local view Control s to save all right so it's looking like it's it's sort of you call that z fighting <laughs> where you get a sort of glitch uh, what we could do simply is with this top part selected 
Let's move this up, G, Z. Let's move it up a little bit. It'll be away, away from that. All right, Control S. All right, so let's re-enable the top and subdivision surface modifier of this. Of the liquid and the glass. The glass, I realize we didn't give it, and that's why it's looking soft here, because we didn't put edge loops there. So let me solo the glass. Press forward slash to solo the glass. And alt left click this edge. And just press control B and give it a little a bevel like that. Left click this leg. All right, control S, press forward slash. And now we're good to go. Press one for front view. Alt A to deselect everything. And now you see we have created our glass, the liquid part in the glass, the top part, and also let's re-enable the cap. Press Control S to save. All right. And what is a good thing to do is attach all of them to an empty. So I press with the bottle collection and enable. Press Shift A, uh, empty, uh, cube. And then press 1. And let's just press GZ. And just scale this, scale this just to match it about there. GZ is match about there. And now with everything selected, the top, press control, select the glass, control the cap, and control the liquid. And lastly, shift click on the empty, and then press control P, parent to object so when i click on the empty let me disable the reference when i click on the empty and i press g to move everything will move with it so now we are ready to text here and light our bottle so now that we have successfully modeled it no need to apply these modifiers as yet all right so we have successfully modeled it we have attached an empty test so we could move it about and now we're ready for adding materials and lighting, which is my favorite part. And there are some lots of tips and tricks I'm going to show you there as well. All right. So I hope this was very helpful. If you like content like this, you please give it a like and subscribe. Let me know what else you may want to know, what I, what I left out, how, how I could probably improve to make you all understand this a little better. All right. So I will see you in part two.